Hello and welcome to The Divorce Chefs, the cooking programme for all you newly divorced people out there. That's right. I'll be taking a look at all the new things you can be doing in the kitchen now that the useless drunken bastard has finally moved out. And I'll be giving you all the good stuff on cooking in bedsits. First, the basics of divorced cuisine. Take away curry. Now curries are the dog's bollocks, right? They taste good, they're cheap, and you can buy them on the way home from work. I've got... Oh, bloody spilled out. Bollocks, you keep going. While Terry's doing that, let's take a look at the three main food groups of the divorced woman. That's chocolate, Linda, and ice cream. Now, most local brand ice creams are pretty good, but for those weeks when wins finally get on to him, move and pick singles. This meal is so easy to prepare. Just take off the lid like this, put First Wives Club in the video, and eat it direct from the handy plastic carton. There. Eat your heart out, Jamie Oliver. Now, a word of warning about these plastic things. They don't work in the oven. Put them in there to heat up. Next thing you know, you've got a load of melted plastic and smoke all over the place. And ovens are like toilets. They do clean themselves, but only when your wife's still living at home. I don't know why that is. It's just the way it works. Now, you could put it in the microwave, but I didn't get custody of that. So the best thing to do is drink a six pack of beer and eat the curry cold. Now that your husband is gone, girls, you know what you can do. That's right. Now you can cook all those essential healthy vegetables that he would never eat. Rabbit food. This is where a set of very expensive, sharp kitchen knives comes in really handy. <coughs> Zucchini can also be prepared the same way. <coughs> and later on, we'll be looking at banana splits. Well, obviously no self-respecting blokes can be seen dead eating a load of hippie rubbish like that. Everyone knows a growing lad needs his protein. Trouble is, now you've got the alimony payments to meet, you can forget about steak and bacon and sausies. Luckily, there's a perfectly acceptable substitute available from your local supermarket. This makes a lovely sarnie. So long as you remember to season it with lots of Nana's old napalm chilli sauce. Hmm. Obviously, this tastes better at two in the morning after a night out with the lads. And of course a night out with the girls is a very different matter from a night out with the lads. And now you can do it any time you want. After all, there's no one to come home to, is there? So let's take a look at the world of fine beverages. Now, it used to be a real art mixing the right food with the right wine. But you no longer have to remember all that fish, poultry, red wine, white wine nonsense. Modern technology has made all that quite redundant. These handy Elko Pops are colour coded so you can tell at a glance what goes with what. The red goes with red meat, the yellow with poultry, the green with seafood, the purple with that rather nice new frock that you bought with the Visa card that you accidentally left behind in your wallet when you moved out, and the electric blue one. I'm not too sure what that goes with, but by then, you won't care. Cheers! Now, while we're on the subject of drinking, a word or two about milk carton etiquette. Now you're on your own, you can do what you like, right? Just fold it back and... Oh my God, you did it. What? You crossed over that line. A what line? The one between house trained and not. Huh? Use a bloody glass. You sound just like my wife. It's a bit lively, that. Eh? We'll put that in the fridge the other day. Oh, and to think I turned down a weekly animal issue show for this. You just don't get it, do you? Oh! What really disgusts women? Oh, you really do sound like my ex-wife. Do you know her or something? I get it. It's the usual anti-male sisterhood thing, oh, right? Firstly, drinking out of the carton is foul, and secondly, not putting it back in the fridge. Well, that's just ignorant. Oh, so I know I'm foul and ignorant, am I? Well, how would you like it if I criticised you? How would you like it if I told you your food makes you fat and unattractive? Oh, well, that's rich coming from you. I suppose you're going to say my bum looks big in this. Yeah, well, there's never any right answer to that, is there? Well, you should know very well, since they say size doesn't matter. Yeah! Such a shame that isn't true. I'll never be rich. And I'll never be attractive. Still, let's <coughs> make the most of it. Next week, we'll be looking at putting together that elegant little post-meeting supper for the sales manager at work. And we'll be using the oyster forks and the asparagus steamers. And I'll be showing you how to cook for the kids the weekend you get to see them. We'll be visiting some of Auckland's great McDonald's franchises. Until then, keep, keep cooking! cooking.